Harness Racing Track Operators. Hi, Nina, and welcome back to At The Track. Our feature race this afternoon is the highlight of Old Home Week from Charlottetown Driving Park, the $12,500 Gold Cup and Saucer, one of the most exciting Gold Cup and Saucer races in many years. Stan Bergstein is back, and he will finish his series on horseshoeing and harness racing horses. But before all of that, we have an interview. Greg Dennis talks with a wrestler turned harness racing trainer and driver, Yvonne Cormier. This man is considered one of the Maritime's best horse trainers. His name is Yvonne Cormier. And though his name might not be familiar, his face should ring a bell. Finishing hold, the sleeper, I think. Most people know Yvonne Cormier as the Beast, a feisty, rough-and-tumble wrestler who body-slammed hundreds of opponents during an illustrious 20-year career. One of four wrestling Cormier brothers from Dorchester, New Brunswick, the Beast earned a pretty good buck on the local circuit and was popular the world over. I enjoyed wrestling. It's, uh, it was good to me. I've seen a lot of country, like, you know, like I've been in Japan five or six times, and been to Hawaii, I've been to New Zealand, I've been to Korea, and... I travel a lot. I've been all over the United States. I've seen a lot of, lot of country, and it's funny. I wasn't the type of guy that really liked to travel, but uh, being a professional wrestler, he brought me a lot of places. I've seen a lot of. Uh, at the time, I didn't think uh, nothing of it when I'd see it. Uh, like I went to Japan. I went to a lot of places. I went where that bomb there, fell in Japan, and uh, seen a museum, and I seen a lot of places at that time I didn't think but now that I think back uh, I'm kind of you know glad that I've seen it and sometimes I'll watch TV at night and see a certain place like in Japan or New Zealand or they show well I tell the kids I said I've been there I remember you know I remember that place these days Cormier travels not around the world but around the 5 8 track at Champlain Raceway he brings to his new job a lifelong love of horses and the same dedication and competitiveness he displayed in the wrestling ring. Those traits attracted him to Francis Beliveau of Dieppe's Belco Stables. When Ivan was seen to be ready to retire from wrestling, uh, I felt that he was, he was a great prospect. And I hired him, I guess, in 79. And I had a couple trainers here with, you know, were good trainers, and they more or less broke him in. The a horse is a horse. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, it's, it's still the same animal, but the thing is, and, you know, the technique of racing, let's say, and he, I think he had good education, let's say, in the, last, in the first year or so that he was here, and then uh, he caught on good and, and quick, and, and uh, he's a hell of a trainer right now. I'd okay. say one of the best. A lot of people thought he was a little goofy by taking, uh, you know, like a professional wrestler, really, that never had anything to do with racehorses. So uh, we went on, and uh, things have been very good. I think a lot of luck, maybe but uh, we had a lot of good quotes. That includes Falcon Sealster, a world champion with earnings over a million dollars. Every autumn, Beliveau buys yearlings from Ontario and the United States. A year later, he returns to sell the better colts at a profit. In between, it's Cormier's job to see that Beliveau's investments pay dividends. First of all, you have to have a little horsemanship in you. I mean, it's like a guy that uh, fixes a car. You've got to be a mechanic. And some of them are smarter than others. Not, I'm not trying to say that I'm smart. Just that I'm, what I'm saying is that you have to have an imagination. You've got to be able to imagine what the horse really needs. If he needs, uh, you got to be rough with him to make him mine, or you got to be easy with him. He's, uh, some horse got different. Some of them break in right easy uh, in the two or three days to, like an old racehorse and some of them takes months i remember perfect blue chip was a nice colt he made over three hundred thousand he uh, he pays 56 he was a nice colt but uh, we bought him he bought him in harrisburg sale with the latter part of october and it was february before that he really was a horse and he was just stubborn he wanted to lay down he wanted to turn inside out he done everything to be miserable 
but he used to show a lot of speed by time. So, uh, like he was a horse that we had to have a long, it took a long time to get him there. But when he got there, he was a nice little horse. Cormier picked up his nickname in North Carolina in 1964. A wrestling promoter thought the beast suited his shaggy appearance and gruff demeanor. He'll carry that handle around with him for the rest of his life and with no regrets. But he doesn't miss the ring action. He's home a lot more now with his wife and children, and training horses isn't quite as punishing as those slams into the turnbuckle. We fit right into me with the horses, and I'm not ashamed of I'm not scared of horsemen or I was brought up in them, so it's nothing. A lot of people say they come in the barn and hold their nose, they smell, but I don't smell it. Uh, I'm happy. It don't bother me at all. For At the Track, I'm Greg Dennis. Well, all the action in the Maritimes was centered at Charlottetown. It was old home week. We'll start out with the two-year-old pacing Colts, A Division, Pineway Cadet, 203 and 1, Nifty, Nero, 2, 2 and 4, B Division, Overnight Storm, 206 and 4, the two-year-old Phillies, Esker Eve in 204 and 1, Hard Times in 205, and Miss Heather Marie in 206 and 2. The Ann Shirley Stakes, some nice 2, 2 and 3, and Hidden Intentions in 203. The Gold Cup Consolation, Paris Dexter, 2 minutes, flat. An invitational trot, Captain Jamie 204, 12th consecutive victory. The Wall Hennessy Memorial, Spin and Dandy 203 and 4, with Wally Hennessy winning the race named after his grandfather. And the Norm McPhail Memorial, good clean fun in 202 and 4. To Fredericton, it was Newt's Image in 203, the quickest mile, and Gideon Lobel taking the feature class in 203 and 4. Over to Truro, quickest mile, Calatire in 202 and 1, and Charlotte's Reward wins the Stanfield Stake in 204 and 4. At Champlain Raceway, Dunmore Tweeds, third consecutive Atlantic Sires three-year-old trot stake victory in 205. Our leading drivers, three winners at Fredericton for Bobby Stevenson, two winners each for Mike Campbell and Eric Lakes. At Charlottetown, the top driver in all home week, Gary McDonald, a 472 percentage. He had 19 victories and 148 points. Down to Churro, Emmons McKay, four winners in one program. The top driver for July, Henry Smallwood, a 504 percentage. And Bernie Pooker McCollum and Bruce McLean, each coming up with eight victories during the month of July. At Champlain Raceway, they were down. There was racing only on last Tuesday. Two winners each on that program, Marcel Berrio, Dave Carey, and Mike Downey. And Dave Carey in from Sackville Downs, enjoying a super month of August at Champlain Raceway. We'll be back with more at the track in a moment's time. Well, Stan Bergstein is with us once again, and we've had some inquiries about Stan. Stan is the executive director of an organization called Harness Tracks of America. It's a lobbying group for most of the major harness racing tracks in North America. Stan also is well known for his PR work. He's back again on this afternoon show to discuss shoeing a horse. Here's Stan. Jim Lowe has been practicing the ancient art of farriery for 17 years. He is a horseshoer. And he's going to show us right now how he takes a shoe off of a horse and how he puts one back on. I'm picking up the horse's foot now to place between my knees. And with my pullers, I'm going to take the shoe off. First one side and then the other. Easing it out. This is a bar shoe for this particular horse who has some problems. The shoe holds the, the foot together and gives support all around. Uh, I'm going to pair it out a little bit here. Not too much because he doesn't have too much to come off. Now I'll rasp to smooth this off and get a nice even surface. This piece also acts as a foot level, who oh now, to determine if the foot is completely level. I can tell by looking in the sides. And I see a little bit of space there. So I'm going to just rasp it a little more. Now 
There. Okay. Well, we'll now... We'll now nail it on. And it, it's not going to hurt the horse at all. We're trying to get some good, solid nails into the wall there. And we're going to clinch off the nail. It comes through the wall and on the outside, and a little piece is left there. Now I'm going to center the shoe a slight bit here. And we're going to put another nail on in the inside. That's a good nail. That's, that went in not good. This seats the nail down. And now I'm going to clinch each nail over by bringing the horse's foot forward. Who now? Jim, how often do horses have to be shod during the racing season? About every two weeks. Some a little more and some a little less. And how much does it cost? Between $40 and $50, depending upon what we put on. And you individualize the shoes for yes. each horse? Yes, we do. Designer shoes for $40 or $50. And in this case, you get four instead of two. We've been asked many times about miles raced in two minutes or better. The first one was in 1897, Star Pointer. Since that time, there have been 64,184 miles in two minutes or better. Only 3,282 of those have been by trotters. The leading sire of $100,000 career winners for Pacers, most happy fellow, 199 of them. He's followed by Albatross at 179 and Meadow Skipper at 169. Albatross, by the way, commands the highest stud fee among pacing stallions. It is $75,000, followed closely by Niatros and San Sam at $40,000 each, and you can expect Niatros's fee to be going up shortly if he keeps coming up with the big winners. The tops among stallions for trotters at $50,000 is Speedy Crown. We'll be back with more at the track in a moment's time. Stan Bergstein is back with us with a unique story on a unique piece of therapy for harness racing horses, and Stan gets along swimmingly well. Lameness is the scourge of the racehorse, and ironically, lameness is a byproduct of what the horse does and the working place where he does it. It is the racetrack that causes lameness in most cases, the pounding on the dirt. The surface of the track, of course, is the horse's enemy, and it is what causes sinews and tendons and ligaments ultimately to give way. It makes no difference whether the horse is a pacer, as in this case, where both legs on one side of his body move forward at the same time and he hits a hard, firm racing surface, or a trotter, as this one is, with a diagonal gait, where he has the power from behind, still hitting that firm racetrack and basically going lame behind, or whether he is a runner on a much softer, deeper cushion racetrack, where the lameness usually occurs in front as he slaps that racetrack with those front legs and all of the weight of his body. In all of the cases, it is the dirt of the racetrack that causes the stress and the strain. There is a way in training to avoid it, and bad-legged horses, as they are known, those who have afflictions of the legs, use this recourse to avoid it. They swim. They do much of their training, building the sinews of their legs and the wind in their lungs by swimming. And many of them swim many miles a day in the course of their training routine. Relatively few horses swim for exercise. Most of them train on the racetrack. But those who have leg problems do this increasingly. And it is a solution to the lameness problem that is being used in all forms of racing at racetracks all over the world. And so there is a way out of the dilemma of the working place affliction. Avoid the racetrack when you train. Swim if you can. And more and more horses are doing it throughout the world of racing. Some changes in schedule and back to schedule around the Maritimes for harness racing action next week. First, we will go to Truro Raceway. They'll be racing tomorrow evening. That's Sunday, 7.15, and then back again on Thursday. 
That Tuesday program of last week was for one week only. And a trill coming up on Labor Day is the prestigious Donnie Turner Memorial Stake for three-year-old maritime bread cult. At Charlottetown, they go three times next week, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and those are all programs in the evening. At Fredericton, there is no racing next week. They are down because of Atlantic National Exhibition racing in St. John. However, Fredericton returns to action the following week. It's their own exhibition, and they'll be racing on the holiday, again midweek, and a doubleheader card coming up again on the end of the week. A busy time as well at Champlain Raceway. That action starts tonight, the $5,000 Diep Classic. That event features Killer Lobo, Rev Your Engine, Angel's Shadow, Ajo, and Spike It Hot. Rev Your Engine and Angel's Shadow, the horses which had battled it out in the final of the $12,500 Gold Cup and Saucer Race, a highlight of Old Home Week at the Charlottetown Driving Park last week, and each of those horses was a winner in the Gold Cup and Saucer Trials. Coming up next week at Champlain Raceway, the two-year-old Atlantic Sires Stake Trotters on Tuesday night, and there's racing as usual on Saturday. Champlain Raceway back into action after being dark during Old Home Week. Well, we've mentioned twice in the show the Gold Cup and Saucer Race and a prestigious race, also a very colorful event. And also this year, it was one of the most exciting Gold Cup and Saucer races in many, many years. Here's Dan Vio with the thrilling story of Gold Cup and Saucer 1986 from Charlottetown Driving Park. It was a wet night for the 27th annual Gold Cup and Saucer pace here at the Charlottetown Driving Park, but a large enthusiastic crowd was on hand, and they weren't disappointed. Track announcer Kevin Boomer Gallant calls the race. Race number 10, top of the stress. The 27th running of the Gold Cup and Saucer has one Angel Shadow, two Burner's Delight, three Gemini Risk, four Ajo, five Good Advice, six Cruise Captain, seven outside Damage Control. Your trailer is eight, Rev Your Engine, eight starters, Gold Cup and Saucer. Here they come. Shadow Burners Delight, Gemini Risk there, five wide as they race into the first turn. It's Angel Shadow, your leader up front. Burners Delight racing second, Gemini Risk drives up on the outside third. Abjo went along the rail fourth, they're racing up the back stretch, going to the opening quarter. It's Angel Shadow on top, Burners Delight, Gemini Risk parked out third, Abjo out the rail in fourth, Cruise Captain racing fifth. Damage control, rev your engine, and a good advice trails. They go by the opening quarter, racing into the far turn. Angel Shadow, your leader up front. Burner's Delight racing second. Ajo now shows third, 29 and one by the opening quarter. They swing off the top turn, racing through the stretch, first time approaching the half mile mark. It's Angel Shadow on top. Burner's Delight racing second. Cruise Captain drives up on the outside third. Ajo up the rail in four. There goes damage control. One and five. Gemini risk. Rev your engine moving from seven. Well back. Good advice. They race into the turn moving to the five eight. Half mile in a minute. Two fifths. It's Angel Shallow on top. Burner's Delight second. Cruise Captain on the outside third. Ajo down along the rail. Who rev your engine is flying on the outside. They're racing down the back stretch going by three quarters angel shallow here comes rev your engine he's flying up alongside angel shallow it's angel shallow rev your engine keeps on coming 131 by the three quarters angel shallow rev your engine they're neck and neck two of them in contention angel shallow rev your engine is coming on rev your engine angel shallow angel shallow rev your engine who's got it who's gonna win it it's gonna be rev your engine angel shallow up for three is ajo ladies and gentlemen we just witnessed quite a horse race here at the cdp an amazing victory for Rev Your Engine and driver and trainer Phil Pinckney, who collected the $12,500 first prize purse for the Palatine Farm of Kingston, New York. 
We talked with Phil shortly after the presentation. So a big win tonight for Phil Pinckney on Rev Your Engine, 202 and 1. Not a great time, but certainly a great win. Oh, sure is a great win. No, the time is uh, time's a little off, but the track was pretty off pretty good. I don't know, someone was saying it was off five seconds, whether it was off that much or not, but uh, it was pretty slippery, pretty heavy going. Yeah. It was a tough race for you, wasn't it? Oh, it was a tough, didn't look good at all. I left in the back tier at an eight hole, which I thought was position wasn't too bad, but he's not really used, used to leave another back tier, but... Uh, the going was pretty tight in the first turn. Now everybody was looking for a hole and the uh, spot to set in on the rail, and uh, I kind of got crowded and boxed in, really, and it didn't look good. I didn't think I was going to get out because uh, uh, coming to the half, uh, cruise captain and damage control, they seemed to be about done, like, you know, they didn't have much go to them, and I had to go move three deep on the lower turn, which is, is not a good move, you know, really, because... Uh, but I had to get handy. The leader started drawing off on me. Like, and if I'd have sat behind them longer, I really didn't think I'd catch them. Like, you know, so, so I went three deep on the lower turn and, and, and got around them. And, and he just, just got up and outgamed Angel Shadow. Like, you know, he just be able to beat him by a neck. But it was a good race. I thought my colt race real super. Like, you know. It was a long race to run for, for your horse, wasn't it, it? It was a terrific race. Well, take back to here, everything right, and go where he had to come from. He, he really went a big trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you think you had it when you rounded the last? turn because it was it, it was really neck and neck coming up the straight wasn't it it sure was uh when i come around the turn i thought i had a good shot at him but then i got to order well maybe my horse after using three deep he'd get tired see it was gone but he, he just got in there and dug right in and fought real good mm -hmm. yeah I, and i after going that three deep trip i said oh